Good morning. Good morning. To all those present, those reading the service, and those joining us later online. May this church be a space where each one of us feels safe and respected, a part of God's family. God created and cherishes our diversity in age, in gender, orientation, body build, health, and history. As we pray, work, eat, sing, lament, and celebrate, we do, we do so as equal members of God's beloved kingdom. May this be a time, a sacred hour of community with God and with one another. We've got some announcements this morning. First, we've, we hold in prayer as we, as we do weekly uh, Phelps United Church in Redbridge. I don't know where Redbridge is. Does anyone? Uh, something Round in our Bay. Round North Bay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, today is Advent 2. I mean, sorry, Advent 1, and we're getting ahead of ourselves here. Today is, yeah, because we do not want to miss today. We do not want to miss this day. We're also celebrating communion, and it's a benevolent offering. Uh, it's invited today. Tuesday, November 30th at 10 a.m. is our local Zoom Advent study, and uh, there will be a link in the email, and Allison is leading that, and it is a gem, and you don't want to miss it. Wednesday, December 1st, is the early good food box order deadline, and the delivery is on the 16th. So pay attention to that date, please. Wednesday, December 1st, um, for our muffin ministry, we want to thank Debbie, and we want to thank Faye, for their, for their contributions to the muffin ministry. We do need uh, one, we no, don't need any. That's, that's, a great, that's a great announcement. We don't need any muffins for the 15th. This is great. On Wednesday, December 1st, there is a milk event, a man to intentional learning event, and it's on the 1st, the 8th, and the 15th, but the first one is on the 1st, and it's, the sessions are called, Do You Hear What I Hear? And they're experiences of the Advent scriptures uh, through different lenses. So it, it, it's, going to, um, it's going to challenge us to, to hear different folks' voices. December 2nd is a choir at 7.30. Please bring your proof of vaccination. And on the 9th, uh, put it in your calendars, choir members, uh, and for everyone else as well, that there won't be a hymns, there won't be a choir practice, but there will be a hymn sing online. And uh, if you've if you've been if you've connected with with Faye's hymn sings before, uh, we will not be disappointed. That's on the ninth. And also, uh, save the date. Uh, tell a friend. Uh, Wednesday, December 22nd, is our longest night service in person. Uh, longest night is, is certainly a, a time where people come to community and quiet uh, and are contemplating and are here for lots of comfort, lots of different reasons, including times of grief and longing. And uh, so it is a, a, a really lovely, quiet time of fellowship. before those of us who are settlers and those who are descendants of settlers came to this land, there were people here, and many nations of people lived and still live on the land we call Canada. Given the responsibility by the Creator to be the stewards of this land and all that lives on it, we know these people as Indigenous. Today, as we remember what it means to love our neighbours, let us give thanks for the Indigenous peoples of this land and let us remember that we worship God on the historic territory of the Wanapate First Nation. As Christ's people, let us be the people of love, of truth, and of reconciliation. People of the Creator, gather in. 
the one who made the sun and the moon and the stars, calls us now to pay, to pay attention, attention and to wait in hope. In the midst of unpredictability, the one who causes the seas to roar and the waves to crash, calls us now to, to pay, pay attention, attention and to, to wait in hope. In the dimness of December Advent days, don't let your hearts be troubled. Let, let us worship the one who is our hope. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come into this day, into this time and place. We welcome this season of Advent. Yet, what we may envision as a time of colored lights, a manger of hay and preparing sweets, we are reminded that it is a time of waiting. Our hearts can be weighted down, and we can become distracted and disappointed. We are reminded not to expect perfection, but to expect possibility. God invites us to pay attention to the here and now and the realities of this life. Open our hearts that we can respond to your invitation into the waiting. Help us to experience the gift of faithful living, that you are a God of hope worth waiting for. Mm -hmm. Amen. Holy One, we light this candle a flicker of starlight, cradled in a forever circle of green, a sign of belonging, of growth, of possibility, of awe and of wonder. May it be a reminder of your divine spark kindling new beginnings within us. Hope be born among us. As we journey to the major this Advent season, we light the candle of hope to help us make our way. Please join me in our opening hymn, Hope is a Star.
peace of Christ be with you all. And, and also with you. Greet each other with the peace of Christ. I can't believe it that we are back here already, or I can't believe it that it's taken this long to get here. <laughs> One way or another, we're here. It's time for the time at the tree, and this year, once again, you'll see the tree is bare, and you'll find out in a minute why. I don't know if you recognized or you noticed when you came in. Uh, something pretty special at the front above the communion table. Anyone notice a new banner? Yes. <sighs> Allison Hardy, brilliant, brilliant. This uh, this season we are the theme for our Lent, our uh, our Advent this season is called Journey to the Manger. And if that doesn't look like a journey, I don't know what is. As well, when we we sang. Joyful is the dark, which is the, the a bit of a theme uh, song that we will hymn that we'll sing at the beginning of each service. It is definitely some starry night up there, and I hope that uh, over this this season, if there are, are moments and times where you feel distracted or uh, need to reconnect with what we're doing uh, or what is being what is being heard uh, by the word, that you could maybe focus on. On that, on that beautiful banner. Thank you, Allison. Um, speaking of of journeys or trips, um, what is one of the main things you need when you're going on a trip, uh, so you know where you're going? A map. a map. Absolutely, yes. You need a map. And what is on a map that helps you to find your way? What, what, what's on there? The roads. Okay, the roads. Interruptions. Interruptions? Yeah, like if you have a GPS, if you have a GPS on your phone or in your car, um, it actually shows you where there's detours and when there's uh, accidents. So it, it helps you to steer clear or give you a, a detour. So it, it tells you, it tells you uh, where, to, where to go. It gives you, what are those, what would they be? Signposts? S signs, signposts, absolutely, yes. So numbers of, of, of uh, highways and, and maybe places to stop along the way, the map gives you signs. Now, this journey that we're on, our journey to the manger, we're not going to use a map, not in the sense that we, were, we would think, that has uh, uh, what we typically would be using if we're gonna go on a trip. But every week, God provides us with some directions. What do we read every week that helps us with our directions? Scriptures. Yes, absolutely. Scriptures. Our scriptures help and give us signs to help us to lead a, a, a good life, a life that maybe helps us to avoid some of the detours and distractions and um, maybe some of the pitfalls that, that we could face. And then of course, um, there are times where we're right in the middle of them, aren't we? And we don't have a choice. But there's also scripture that speaks to us to help us get out of them too, doesn't it? Don't they? Today, we are in our, in our scripture we're going to hear, we're going to hear an Old Testament scripture from Jeremiah, and we're also going to hear a parable that Jesus told about the fig tree, but it also speaks about any tree. So in any, any climate, we can think of the trees around here. So I know that my yard is full of maples, they're leaved, leaved trees, and birches, etc. Um, but the scripture says that the buds are going to come, and the leaves are going to come, and that tells us that summer is coming. Just like God says that a sun is coming. Just like 
God told the prophets years and years and years before, oh, by the way, something's coming. Jesus is coming. So it's a promise that God gives us. A promise that when we see the buds on those trees and that those leaves come, we know that summer is coming. And it's a promise just like God has promised Jesus to come into our lives. So every week on this bare old tree, we are going to add signs. We're going to add signs of the season that are going to help us find our way. Now, when we have signs that help us in our direction and that we stay on the right path, that's really hopeful when we, when we see that a leaf is growing in the summer, in the springtime. Those buds, it's the best thing to see. So just like that, we want to think about some of the hopeful signs we see in this season. Can anybody think of a hopeful sign in the middle of some of our messes that we have in this season? A hopeful sign that we see about God and about Jesus coming. Anybody? About something maybe somebody does or says or an action that takes place? I know that every Wednesday morning when I come in here, there are these amazing people that drop off muffins. And I deliver them downtown to the church downtown where they deliver muffins for the homeless. And I wonder, I just wonder, when someone who really could use a leg up or a help is biting into one of those muffins, have we shared some of our hope with them? And maybe, just maybe, do they feel more hopeful when they are taking a bite out of a gift from someone else? And maybe, in turn, will they do that? So, anybody else have any thoughts about Hopeful signs. I've asked for donations to the women's shelter and for our boat closet, and people are donating the critiques and the medicine, so it's very hopeful that we're supporting these and associations. Okay. Okay. So asking for donations for for shelters and for folks to be warm in the winter time? Absolutely, yes. What about just a simple smile? A simple, you know, wearing a mask. That's very hard. Yes. But there's something about your eyes, right? I, I'm, I'm looking at Carol Morrison right now. And when I see her eyes brighten up, I know there is a smile behind that mask. I was at the mall, and uh, the gentleman in front of me was going out, and he opened the door for me. And so I walked out, and I thanked him. I said, thank you very much. And he said, I don't very often hear that. He said, that was really nice. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wonderful. And, and I'm sure that maybe he's, he did a little skip <laughs> on his way shopping when he heard your words of thanks. So today, we're going to hang some hope. We're going to hang some hope on the tree. And in there. In the form of green leaves. And if there are some snowstorms coming our way <laughs> between now and Christmas Eve, let's take a look at these leaves and have them remind us it will be coming again. Summer. <laughs> Summer is coming. It's promised. Let's uh, take a moment to, uh, to share the words that uh, Jesus taught us. Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to ask if Christina can lead us in Cradle Me in Your Arms. As so many of us might need this at this time of the year for sure. Let the words wash over you. Jesus Lord. 
at our time of thanksgiving, gratitude, and mission. We are grateful today for Dina Moans Blog. Dina, I, I'm, I'm, she has, she spent years picking up the good food boxes in Sudbury. And much of the produce was enjoyed at the food banks and sometimes the residents of Colson Court. Dina has now since moved to Sudbury, but we want to take this time now to thank Dina for, for her time. So, thank you, Dina. Uh, for the season of Advent, we're going to hear from, from Judy. And Judy's going to share a minute for mission each Sunday. Oh, a Palestinian olive farmer finds hope and strength in the land. I'm Sherry Omar, a farmer from a small village in Palestine. Palestinian people don't control our own country. The Israeli government decides where we can live, where we can go, and what we can do. They took away my land. Eight years later, I was lucky and got my land back. I grow juicy guava fruits, oranges, olive trees, and many vegetables. The land is how we make a living. It is also our memories, our dreams, and our hopes. I feel alive when I'm on the land. In 2002, they built a big fence to block us from our farmland. Farmers snuck through the fence to one of their plants. Many were arrested. I found a wild tree growing on a steep rock, dry and thirsty. I and it began to bloom. Years later, I went to see if the wild tree was still alive. I was amazed. Many of its branches were growing again. I kissed it. My wife heard me talking. She shouted, Marie, wake up. Who are you talking to? I was lying beside the wild tree. My wife looked at the dry rock. She asked, how can this tree survive? I said, this is a Palestinian tree. A Palestinian can live without water, without food, if its roots are in the land. The oil of the olive reminds us that we are blessed by God. We are called to seek justice and to take action to help keep hope alive. Thank you, Judy, that story of hope. In this season of giving and receiving gifts, we are asked to consider our abundances. With grateful hearts, we bring our blessings to share with God's people, the one who is the giver of all things. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for all of the abundances in our lives. We ask that you take and use these gifts for your work in the world. Amen. Let's listen for the word of God. Reading from chapter or Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 to 16, the righteous branch and the covenant with David. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Second reading from Luke, chapter 21, verses 25 to 36, the coming of the Son of Man. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads 
because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees, and as soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly, like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place, and to stand before the Son of Man. For this reading from Scripture, Thanks be to God, and by God's grace, may we hear a living word in it. Amen. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We're anticipating something on this journey. God, help us to follow your signs. And what is it that you would have us here today? Lord, speak to me that I may speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Sometimes I use the side door at the church, the one over here, and I head straight up to my office. And this past week, I did just that. And when I was approaching the door, I looked up and there was this, this envelope perched against it. I found it odd because we pick up our mail at the, at the post office like everyone else in this town. So I scooped up the envelope quickly and made my way inside. Honestly, I had to sit down on the steps before I fell. Now, the envelope was addressed in care of Pastor Pam and the Trinity Congregation. Okay, so this makes sense. It's a church and we're congregants in it. But the return address, the return address had just one word, God. Now, you know why I need to sit down. I was both terrified and bursting with anticipation as to what was inside the envelope. I didn't smile though. <laughs> Noticing God's priorities for God's world. They don't disappoint, considering we made use of recycled paper. Once our role model, always our role model. Back to the letter, or whatever's inside of it. I, I opened it, and this was what was inside. It's an invitation. It's an invitation from God. And it says, Dear Trinity, you are being invited into the mystery of Advent. Advent means coming. You'll read in the scriptures that I sent prophets to tell you of who was to come. I sent my son, the word made flesh, to be your savior. This I promised, that Jesus would come, and I always keep my promises. <laughs> that sounds like God. So Trinity, in this time of waiting, I've sent you some signs to help you so that you don't lose your way 
on your journey to the manger this year. There will be many distractions as you go. So you'll need to pay attention. Keep your eyes on me and remember you are not alone. That also sounds like God. In this time of waiting, it is a time to look around you and look inside of yourselves to see where I am and what I am up to. So Trinity, look up at the starry skies to the holy haunting journey to the manger so you can sing and tell the story too. <laughs> Love you with all my powerful being. God. Wow. This already feels like this Advent journey is one we might never forget. Today we hear a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. According to my Old Testament studies this term, specifically from Jewish and Christian scholars, Kamenitsky and Lord, we learn firstly that Jeremiah finds out that God actually appointed him to be a prophet well before he was born. God would touch Jeremiah's mouth and place the prophesies that he would speak within Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah contains messages of both judgment and of hope. According to the scholar Kathleen O'Connor, she says, at that time, the Israelite people are taken captive, dragged from their land, and deprived of their temple. They are beaten, imprisoned, and face death. And like Jeremiah, they cry out to God in anger and despair. It's brutal for the Israelites, and it will get much worse. Yet even in this time of great upheaval, in the midst of the suffering, God promises to protect and restore the people. Now let's face it, this does not sound like a cheery, warm fire and chestnuts roasting kind of Christmassy scripture to hear, does it? Can't we just get to the stockings already? The fact of the matter is, is that there are some of us who don't want to hear the grief and the pain and the heartache of the world lived out then, and neither the world that we're living in now. We may also be those kinds of people that celebrate the, the joyful news of Easter, but block our ears to the realities of Good Friday. Death cries from the cross, or birth cries from the stable. They are our Christian realities. They are Jesus' realities. Episcopal Priest Fleming Rutledge reminds us, Advent begins in the dark. It is not a season for the faint of heart. We are being invited to a season that is not all smiles and good cheer, as Debbie Thomas shares. I love the season that it rejects shallow sen sentimentality and false cheer. And I love that the gospel gets us started this week with images not of swaddling clothes, twinkly stars, and fleecy lambs, 
but of the world as it really is here and now. Gorgeous, fragile, and falling apart. Today's Old Testament lesson from Jeremiah tells us of God's promise. God says, the days are surely coming when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David. Ever since I was a child, I can remember my dad's garden. Of the many items, he particularly loved growing fruit. Some went into my mom's raspberry pies and jams, red currant jellies, and some into warm stewed rhubarb topped with vanilla ice cream, and berries topped both hot and cold cereals in the morning. The garden produced good things, and he was especially fond of making wine from all these fruits. He would pay particular attention to the grapevines that twisted up and around our arbors and climbed up the sides of our house. One day, my dad was given a special branch from a grapevine, and its source was directly from Italy. Now, the details are fuzzy, and nobody needs to make any phone calls as to the source of this contraband and how it came into my father's possession. All I know is he was more than excited to plant that branch in the soil of the garden bad bed that ran along the garage, which was self-facing. I, I have to say in my, younger, in my younger life, I took one look at this branch and thought it would be good for kindling, if nothing else. There was no signs of life to this branch. Dad would check the branch daily, would water and tend the soil, and he would wait and wait. Until one day, the branch produced a sprout of leaf. This was very exciting to my father, and I'll admit that excitement was so contagious. He would care for the vines, and he put chicken wire up so it would keep feasting animals out while the grapes would mature. Over the years, the vine grew in both directions across that garage, and it was once painted white, sprawling with green, producing nourishing fruit. The grapes came about from hopeful, watchful eyes that tended to them lovingly, along with help from the mystery of the Creator that brings life from death. Today's scripture passage from the book of Luke, as we spoke about at the time at the tree, where we hung leaves signs of new life. Jesus says in the Luke text, with God's promise in the form of a sign that as soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. God gives us signs to follow on our journey to the manger. God invites us to look at the goodness that is shared by others and can be stirred within us that resembles sprouting leaves of new life. I recall recent stories of love poured out from the neighbor to neighbor 
in the rushing waters in British Columbia. I don't know if you listen to them on the CBC, any of them. Incredible. And you too. Maybe the hands and the feet that are helping to clothe and to feed and to nourish. God hopes that offering of our prayers, if nothing else, those are signs of new life. This promise of coming during this time of waiting invites us to not stand still. People of action. Indeed, our actions reveal that the kingdom of God is near. The hanging mistletoe, colored lights and wreaths on doors are lovely images. But are they signs of what? Tradition? Ornaments capturing a sense of home? Nostalgia? I'm all for that. Yet Advent, we are invited by God to pay attention to where God is moving in our lives. May the signs that we pay attention to be those that point to the Christ to come. In the opening prayer this morning, it said that God was worth waiting for. And yes, we've established that the words of Scripture today aren't necessarily warm, but rather filled with warning shots to be on guard and to be alert at all times. Yet, let's remember God's invitation to, yes, be alert, to look up, to look around and inside of ourselves to the hope found in God's promises. God is worth the wait. I hope the hymn sung at the beginning of the service, Joyful is the Dark, becomes an earworm for this season. Majesty in darkness, energy of love, word in flesh, the mystery proclaiming. Kathy Beach Berry shares that Advent involves preparing for two comings. God coming to the earth as the infant Jesus, whom we await at Christmas, and Christ returning to the earth at a time we do not know. It is not a matter of if, but of when. And Jesus wants us to be ready. So just as the leaves on the trees offer us hope of summer to come, so God's word in Jesus promises us new life. God's invitation to Advent offers us expectation and hope for something new to stir within us. So Trinity, make this season of Advent a time of having us look up at the starry skies to the holy, haunting journey to the manger so we can sing and tell the stories too. Amen. And now with our hunger pangs and the need to have our thirst quenched, we are invited to the table. Here is where God applies the salve to our bruised and tired world, our bruised and tired hearts. Let us prepare to break bread together.
with thankful prayer and praise, we open our hearts to the maker of leaves on trees that speak hope. And of the sun, moon, and stars, before we drew first breath, O oh God, our home was made in you. Creator of all from the very beginning, you have spoken through your prophets with the promise of peace. The word made flesh. We bask in holy mystery under the cool night sky on a shepherd's path to the place where hope is birthed. We turn our eyes to the heavens and proclaim your goodness. And we cannot contain what you've written on our hearts. There is no place you cannot find us, and nowhere we don't exist. Your name is for The night before Jesus suffered and died, he and his friends shared a meal together. We do the same each time we gather at this table. After the meal, Jesus held the bread. We thank God for it. He broke it. We do the same. He said, take and eat this bread. It's my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup. And in the same way, he gave thanks to God. He passed it to his friends. He told them to drink and remember me. Gracious God, author of our story, you remind us with the bread and the cup of your life, death, and resurrection. Please join me as we share the mystery of faith by speaking God's words of truth. We proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. Lamb of God, joys, delight, and boundless love. You send your Holy Spirit to pour over us and this bread and cup that we may be one in Christ. Blanket us in your care, giving us strength in faith and love to be Christ in your world. And now, Holy Comforter, we remember all of those who are absent from this table. Yet you long for us to share this meal. We pray for those who are overlooked, whom this world counts as last and least. We pray for those who grieve and those who are alone, for those with health challenges, our victims of racism, oppression, and hate. We pray for the reckless, the addicted, the imprisoned, the hard-hearted, and those with invisible wounds. We pray for your church, God, and all those ministries that respond with love to this world. We pray for Faye as she is preaching at this moment, and we grant her safe travels home from Massey. We bring now all of what's on our heart. We offer them to you now, God.
as we say together, blessed be these Advent days, and let us share the joy of knowing Christ throughout this world. The table is set with bread for the journey. There's a cup of joy. And we have oil for healing. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Come, supper is ready. pray. Thank you, God, for this bread and cup, for love that cannot die, for peace the world cannot give, and for joy in the company of friends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go now with hope that this Advent season holds. Carry the light of peace with you. And may the presence of God uplift you. The gentleness of Christ live in your hearts. And the wisdom of the Holy Spirit guide you today and always. Amen. <laughs>